Okay, now why does this matter for you personally? Why is the Trinity important to personal faith? And maybe this is the... Maybe I should have said all this first so that I hadn't been talking for 50 minutes already. But the Trinity is an inherent inherent part of our communion with God. I think you should have seen that by now. It's an inherent part of our communion with God. It defines His presence and power among us. So... What this means is that you know the transcendent Father through the imminent Son, Jesus. Remember Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father? You know the transcendent Father through the imminent Son, and although you do not see Him, He is always present with you as the Holy Spirit. He is always present with you as the Holy Spirit. And I think as we talk about communing with the Father through the Son, by the Holy Spirit, I think that prayer actually becomes sort of the conduit for what that means. And, and, maybe, and, and although prayer in English really means asking, it kind of means asking, I want you to realize that when I say prayer in this sense, that I mean something more broadly. What do we do when we gather in communion or fellowship with each other? We, we talk. We talk, we have conversations, we, we catch up, we, we, we tell each other, we tell stories, we do, th- you know what I mean? We're, we're, we're communicating with each other. So when we commune with God in prayer, it has to do with all, all of your communication, your adoration, your confession, your thanksgiving, your, your, and also your supplication, your asking, right? And so we come to God in prayer. And so notice how, this, how the Trinity affects our prayers. Praying to the Father through the Son, by the Holy Spirit. So when Jesus prayed at Gethsemane, this is right before he goes to the cross, Mark 14, 36 through 38. We're going to see the Trinity at work even in Jesus' own prayer. And he, that's Jesus the Son, said, Abba Father, all things are possible for you. That's the Father. Take this cup away from me, nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay. You have a presence of the Son. Jesus is the agent. He's the one praying. He's the one who's going to go to the cross. He is the agent. He's the one through whom things are happening. But he prays to the Father. Remember in the Lord's Prayer. The disciples asked him, Jesus, tell us how to pray. And he said, pray like this, our Father in heaven. Right? Now, okay, I'm not going to be legalistic about this. I think when I pray, most of the time I say Lord. And when I say Lord, I'm thinking Yahweh. And if I'm saying what Yahweh, am I praying to the Father? Yes, I am. Because Yahweh is the Father. The, the, because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, their name is Yahweh. Right? So I'm not going to be legalistic about exactly how you pray. But I want you to notice that the point is to go to the one who wills and purposes all things, who is the Father. And so Jesus, the Son, prays to the one who wills and purposes all things, the Father, and he does so through the Holy Spirit. Now, you'll notice if you're looking at the text, especially if you're looking at your own translation of the Bible, that it says the Spirit is willing and the word Spirit is lowercase s. Um, and I don't really like that because what happens is the Greek word pneuma, which is translated spirit or air in English, when it's referring to the Holy Spirit, the translators will make it a capital S. And when it's referring to spirit in any other sense, it'll make it lowercase s. And if I refer to your spirit, you know, um, it's going to be lowercase s. If I refer to the spirit of Christmas, that's a lowercase s, or the spirit of the new year, right? That's a lowercase s. I'm just saying, like, what it's like. But when Jesus, who, by the way, the New Testament authors are very intentional and careful to say was full of the Holy Spirit since his conception in Mary's womb, that when Jesus refers to his spirit, it's different than when you refer to your spirit. Because Jesus' spirit is the Holy Spirit. So I hope you recognize that. And so the Holy Spirit is willing and Jesus senses that. This is what the Holy Spirit wants of me. And then he refers to his flesh and says, although my flesh is weak. 
And so you have this agent of all three, this agent that is Christ that is working according to the Holy Spirit, but he's looking and reaching and supplicating to the Father. And so the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all present in that. Likewise, when you pray, this is the practical part, this is the part that matters. We pray properly speaking to the Father. And again, I'm not, I don't care what words you actually say. That's not what matters. But when you are asking, you are, properly speaking, asking of the Father. But we pray through the Son. That the only reason that you can enter into the throne room of God and make your requests be known before him is because when Jesus died on the cross and he gave up his final breath, we're told in the book of Luke especially, that the curtain was torn in two from top to bottom, that the holy of holies was laid bare so that through Christ you can enter in. No other religion has that. No other religion with a transcendent father has an opening to the holy place where you can just enter in. No, no other has a, has, a, has a deity who cares for his people who is also fully transcendent. But when we pray, we pray through the work of the Son. We can only enter in through Christ because he's the only one who gives us access. And then our means of prayer is through the Holy Spirit. Our prayer is to the Father, through the Son, by the work of the Holy Spirit. And when you don't want to pray, this is the part you write down, when you don't want to pray, we're told in Romans, I'm sorry, we're told in Mark, Jesus' words there, that the Spirit is willing. Maybe, you, maybe you're not willing. Maybe you had a hard week and you had some questions about things that God was allowing to happen or things that you even think maybe God did. And maybe you're having a hard week and you don't want to pray. Maybe in your own sinfulness, you put yourself in a position where you didn't think it was right. You, didn't think it, you don't think it's good for you to enter in. You don't think that God cares anymore about what you think because of things that you've done this week. And so you don't want to pray. You're not willing to pray. But Jesus said the Spirit is always willing. The Spirit is always willing. And so I'm just going to encourage you that this week, when you hit that moment, you woke up groggy, whatever it was, and maybe you do your prayers in the mornings, that you woke up groggy or whatever it is, and you don't want to pray, whether it be for any reason, that you just ask the Holy Spirit if he's ready to pray, because I guarantee you that he is. And you get down, if you get down or whatever, metaphorically, you get down and you pray. And you commune with the Father because He's not waiting for you to be righteous. He's not waiting for you to to want to, to need to. The Spirit is willing and ready to pray. And so there's a sense in which the answer to that is, if you are truly in Christ, then the door is open to you and you better pray. And you say, well, I don't know what to pray. I don't know what to pray. I don't know how to pray. Well, Don't say, I don't know how to pray, because the disciples said that, and Jesus taught them, and you have it written in multiple places in your New Testament. So if you don't know how to pray, just open your Bible and find the Lord's Prayer and get to praying. But sometimes we don't know what to pray, and sometimes life is so complex that the only answers you can come up to the problems are complete and utter foolishness, and you know it. And so you're like, well, I can't pray because I don't even know what to pray. I don't even know what to ask God for. What do you do with that? Well, refer to point one, do it anyway. And if you pray for the wrong, here's the thing. If you pray for something that God doesn't want to happen, did you know that it's not going to happen? Did you know that it doesn't hurt anything? Did you know that when you cannot even express your inner desires, you ever feel something and you try to explain it and you're like, no, that's not what it is. And then you try again and you're like, no, that's still not what it is. And you just can't. Well, in Romans, 
The Apostle Paul tells us that the Spirit will interpret even your groanings. That all, if all you can get out is, God, I don't know what this is, that He will hear exactly what is in your heart and will answer that. That he in, So, it doesn't sound like you have a lot of excuses. If you don't want to pray, that's okay. The Spirit wants you to pray. You don't know what to pray, that's okay. The Spirit knows your heart and mind and He will interpret it. You just get to praying. And when you aren't sure that God hears your prayers, and for that reason you don't want to pray, because I don't even know if God is listening. Listen, the Holy Spirit is the fullness of God, present in power, present in you, and also present in heaven. We necessarily have the Holy Spirit as the third present person of God because He is everywhere, including in you and in heaven, in the very throne room of God. And John tells us in 1 John 5, 4 that this is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. You don't know if God is hearing your prayers. The doctrine of the Trinity makes it evident that he does. That in everything, he does. The work of the Son has opened up the Holy of Holies to you so that the Father hears your prayers. The work of the Spirit, he's delivering the prayers. He always hears your prayers. And so when you don't want to pray, pray. And when you don't know what to pray, pray. And when you aren't sure that God is hearing your prayers, pray. And as we enter into this new year, if you're just afraid that you're going to have a new year like the old year, that you're going to have a frustrating year like last year, you're going to have a troubled year like last year, you're going to have a year of bad health like last year, whatever it is, you're just worried that this year is going to be like last year, I think the one thing that you can change right now, and by the way, it's not something you do, it's something that Christ did, that he has sent his spirit into us, that it's something he did, and because of what he did, then one thing you can do this year is you can pray. And there's not one of us that couldn't use to pray more, to pray more thoughtfully, to pray more consistently, to pray more thoroughly. And so that's my New Year's message to you. Reflect on the doctrine of the Trinity, the significance of it, because the, even your prayers are to the Father, they are through the Son, and they are by the Holy Spirit. And in that, we have great confidence.